Manzi, who is who has been able to come this afternoon, um, and uh, I don't know. It says here, Feng Shui life mapping. So, Salvatore, first of all, thank you so much for showing up today. It's a pleasure to be here on a very busy uh, weekend yeah, in San great. Francisco. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm happy I met you, and I'm happy you accepted the invitation on uh, on my show. It's also all about your profession. So. Uh, so I understand you do Feng Shui, which is more, n it's not Italian, it's more Chinese. Chinese. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you have interest in that for what reason? You know, I started it 16 years ago and I had, my life was sort of a, in shambles. Yeah. And uh, somebody gave me a book on Feng Shui, so I started using it and within months my life was turned around. So I became a believer. Using, using it? Using Feng Shui, yeah. I got, uh, I got a new job, I moved to a better apartment, um, my relationship changed significantly. Really? So I was like, okay, this works. You know? What did you try that worked? So uh, in my workplace I had a boss who was a micromanager, just all uh. Uh, always looking checking over my on shoulder, you. right? And the way I was sitting, I had my back, my, my boss was behind me, so I could never see my boss. I was sitting here, my boss was over there. Well, in feng shui, we don't want to have our back unguarded. So ah. when I put a little mirror on the side of my uh, so computer. So you know when he approached you? So, yeah, I could see when she was approaching. Oh. And then all of a sudden, like, the energy just dissipated. Oh, like, she decided not to check on you. You know, I don't think it was just that she wasn't checking on me. It was I wasn't fearing that check anymore. Up. Right, because oh. I could actually see when it was coming. So ah, I wasn't constantly anticipating. So I was able to relax. First, you were able to relax. Right, and when I was able to relax, and, when she did and approach. And feng shui told you to do that. Yeah, feng shui. You need to have your back in a command position. Like right now, I have a wall behind me, yeah. so I feel protected. Oh. But if I had my back to the door or to somebody else. Else, then I, I don't have that protection. I don't have that sort of privacy. You want to be in control kind of thing. You want to be uh, uh, securely supported. Okay. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to be in control, but need to be supported, have something mm. behind you. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's one thing you tried that made you your life easier. Changed my life. Definitely All right. changed my life. So there's something else you tried. Yeah. Uh, so this was a long time ago. I was deeply in debt. And so I started... Um, yeah, I moved to LA without any money. I had to oh. buy a car. There was a lot of rigmarole, but moved I moved to LA from Italy. I was actually even in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Then. You decided to go there. Okay. And when I uh, when I cured all this debt, which I was unfamiliar with, I didn't know how to handle my finances and budget. So I started changing the way I look at my home to see what aspects of my house was reflecting my debt mm -hmm. and what aspects were reflecting my prosperity. Okay. And by focusing on the prosperity and eliminating the broken things, the dead light bulbs, fix, eliminating the dead plants and fixing the, the lights that don't work, by taking all these little tweaks, I improved my home environment to feel more prosperous and more alive. So what did you do in home again? I, I, so I had, I had a dead plant, mm -hmm. got rid of that. Okay. I had um, some broken items in my kitchen, like a broken coffee. You got rid of them. Yeah, I got rid of them. And then I had some light bulbs that weren't working. And you fixed that. I fixed them. So and you felt good. So all of a sudden my space didn't feel so broken. poor, broken. broken. It started to feel like enabled. So Oh, that's a good point. It changed my feeling around prosperity. And I also get rid of anything that's broken in my house it's because good. it gives you a bad feeling, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it sends a message of I'm not good enough for the clean, um, healthy, perfect thing. Oh, I have to make do with this with broken, broken thing. With broken stuff. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that you need to throw away everything, everything. that's broken. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a function to it. I tell people if it's not used, mm. if it's not loved, or it's not finished. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay. Not used, not loved, or not finished. That's dead weight in our it's life. It's dead weight in your house. Right, and dead weight in our life. It's like, it's like we can't move forward. Let's get rid of it. Let's right. move it. So if I have a broken plate, but I love that plate, it still works. I will try to fix it. Yeah, I will try to fix it. I'll still use it and feel that sense of love with it. Oh. You know, like my grandmother gave it to me, and sure, it's chipped. It's a cell memory. Yeah, it feels good when I use it. Mm. So I don't. you don't have to throw away every broken thing. If it has a sentimental value, keep it. Right. If it gives you the feeling of love. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, we want to walk into our home and feel a hug. You know,、oh. we want to walk in and feel like everything is just embracing us and giving us love. And when we walk in and we think, "Ugh, I gotta do the laundry. I gotta fix that thing. I have to clean that thing," it's not that feeling that we want. You want clean environment. Clean is a so it, very clean important. Clean certainly helps. Yeah, clean <laughs> helps a lot. And get rid of all the clutter. Clutter is the biggest challenge to, especially Americans. Yeah, because we receive so much junk mail. Junk mail, gifts, things are so cheap. It's easy、and、to pick they, up stuff. And then they pile up.、There's、and then a, you have to take one day a month to get rid of it. At least, at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, when I tell people about working on clutter, I tell them start with the smallest area of your house. Really. Start with one drawer or one cupboard or one closet. And get rid of it. And just. Th- and、Clean、that's it, it for the day. Oh, and be、okay. finished. This、right? way you don't feel overwhelmed. Right. That way you don't look at your entire house and say, "I'll never get、There's、to all of this、much. clutter. I'll never get to it all. There's too much out、okay. there." Okay. But by taking one little day of just doing this little drawer, and then the next day, and then in the end, you get to the garage and you tackle that a garage and all that stuff. That's a headache. It's a full day's work. Typically,、mm. but yeah, you have the energy for it. Yeah, there's people who specialize in being organizers. Yes, and、um, I honor them for that because there's a whole psychology around, you know, how does my mind work with organization, and everybody、oh. is different. Yeah, especially、right? if you have so much papers. Right. Papers or food? How do you organize your kitchen, or how do you organize your closet, or、oh. all of those things? So I、yeah. honor the I honor professional organizers. They do it. In the old days,、them. I had a lot more clutter, but now everything is digitized. Yeah, it certainly it helps. Makes life easier, right? Yeah, it's nice. So as you did all these things, you felt better. Yes. And your life got better. I felt better, but my life started getting better, which made me feel even more better. It gave me hope and inspiration. So I went from this place of being like, "Wow, this is this is all that life is," you know, credit card payments and a job I don't want to go to, to wow, you know, there's still creative possibilities in the world.、Huh. And making little tweaks around my house is a fun way to remind myself. That was the first year. That was the first year. And, and then it got even better. It, well, then I took feng shui and I combined it with vision. Vision boarding.、Ah. Have you ever done a vision board? I did. <laughs> it didn't turn out well, or no, no, no. But I don't have time to look at it. Ah,、uh, yes. It's important to give it、uh, a viewing on a, a regular view, basis. A view, a viewing. Sometimes I put it in a roll and somewhere in a corner. So what I what I did is I combined feng shui and vision boarding and created what I call a feng shui life map, which is why my website is feng shui life mapping dot com. Okay. Because when you combine feng shui and vision board. You get this life map. You can actually see where your life is going, and then you can take your vision board around your house and function your house with it. Oh. Yeah, and when I started, when I combined the two of them, weird things started happening. I started meeting the celebrities that I put on the board. I started getting invited to the houses that、no. I put on. No, yeah, just you met the more, people more, more, you more. wanted to meet. Yes, like the people. No, not the people I wanted to meet. The random people that I cut out of magazines and put onto the and board. And by coincidence, they showed up in your life. Yes. Yes. That's a new. Again and again and again, I cut out a yoga teacher, and two weeks later, somebody invited me to a yoga class, and it was him teaching the class. Oh my god! Little things like that. So I was like, "Wow, this is really work." Then I took it to the next level. If you're ready for it. Oh. I took my vision board around my house、mm-hmm. to function my house, and I turned my entire house into, into a vision board. Really? Yeah. So I went over to the travel section and I put up all these pictures of Italy because I'd always wanted to live in Italy, obviously Salvatore, and I changed the whole corner to be all about Chianti and pictures and of Italy. And, and you and went to visit. Three months later, I had a job, a visa, and an apartment waiting for me in Italy. No kidding. Without any effort at all,、Isn't、it just showed up. It is a miracle. So that's when I realized, like everything in our apartment, everything in our space is reflecting who we are and who we are becoming as、oh. well. And if we change the environment to start telling different stories,、hmm. we can change the direction of our life as well. Wow! So that's the essence of feng shui life mapping. And when I and today when I go to people's homes, what I do is help them recognize the impact. About、Or、their everything. home, right? What does it say that you you can only access your bed from one side?、Oh. What's the story that you're telling yourself?、Hmm. And when we know that story, how can we change that story to be the story that we want? If I want to be in a loving relationship, I need to be able to access both sides of the bed evenly. Oh.、So. And you tried that too. 
Uh, yes, I've tried that with many clients. I've had so many wonderful stories of clients who have made little changes. And like that? Yeah. They like, were able to access on both sides? Right, access that um, I had a client who was uh, fighting with her husband all the time. Oh. And when we moved the bed out so there was equal access on both sides, it worked. The fighting stopped. No kidding. There was no longer a power struggle of who had to get in the side, you know? Who had the window? Who, who had didn't? the window? Who could actually get in and out of bed easily? So hmm, Interesting. Yeah. So it all works in the mind as you see the, 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 the setting of the house. It's a great way to think of it. So when I walk into my space, I see the couch, but unconsciously I see the couch that I made out with my partner and I, I sat and watched that movie and so I get all these feelings unconsciously, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't just see a lamp in my apartment, I see the lamp that my mother gave me. Mm. And you know, I don't really like the lamp, but my mother gave it to me, so I have it in there. So It reminds you of her? There's a little story, it not just it reminds me of her, but it reminds me that I have to take stuff that's not really what I want mm. because she gave it to me. And so I've got these two stories unconsciously replaying you. every time I go into a space. And if I want to change my idea, if I want to change my story around mm -hmm. relationships, I might need to change the way that couch is showing up. I might need to change the pillows or the, or the um, fabric or re orientate it somehow really? so, so that I can have a new story a new story and with that new story then I start to see the world differently when I start to you know when I put the mirror up and I was no longer anticipating something bad because I had a story rolling mm -hmm. I actually had the fact I had a mirror the story changed and then my relationship with my boss got all better Mm. If I change the couch in a different orientation and, I cha and it changes the story I have around what it means to be in a relationship or be looking for a relationship or whichever, then I can start moving my life in that direction as well. Does mm. that make sense? How, how about people who don't have too many choices in their living in environment? They don't have everything that somebody can play with. Right. And their front room, bedroom, and everything is in one room. The all what do, what do they do? The one room studio. It's, right. Um, I lived in a one room studio for so a year. So what do you do in those conditions? It, you look at each part of the area as mm -hmm. representing a different aspect of your life. So, so a little couch and a little bed? Oh yeah, as far as organizing, you try to create little pockets. Like here's my social area, here's my kitchen dining area, here's my bed sleeping area. So And you try to distinguish between the three. Oh really? So that you can feel a separation when you are in the space as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's fun to work with small spaces. Actually. Okay. Yeah, because okay. you can actually. So, so you you can uh, if something doesn't if you go to somebody as a consultant and you don't find everything you would like to play with you, you go around it kind of thing. And I'm not sure what you mean. Like, do now, like let's say you go to someone's house uh -huh. and then it doesn't have all the elements that you're ready to work with. So you S create such as those. It, uh, yeah, if I go into someone's house, typically. Um, people after I come to a consultation will spend anywhere from one hundred to twenty thousand dollars. It really depends on how of what, their budget. On what yeah, what their budget is. But the majority of my clients spend less than two hundred dollars, because really what it takes to feng shui a space to is align to just it, change it is to freshen up, loosen out the clutter, and then change the mementos. Maybe change the photographs or paint a wall or get a new runner for the uh, floor, these kind of things. It brightened up the, the room. Right, yeah, anytime we add light, sound, m aroma, we add energy to a space and it allows us to feel more enlivened as well. So your space over the years has improved? Yes, I mean, it's very difficult for me to actually Consult function yourself. myself. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sort of blind to the obvious. No, I mean, if space. you have to compare your living situation 13 years ago to oh, your gosh. living situation now, <laughs> do you see a big difference? It's a huge difference. It's not just that, it's an appreciation for what I have. Really? Yeah, I, I now like focus on the good things that I have in my living environment. Now, I don't live in a castle, but at the same time, I don't know that I want to live in a castle. I take, I take advantage of the view that I have. I take advantage of the quiet that I have. I take advantage of the space that I have. Oh. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit of a clean person because I... So you, you, you keep the space pretty... I keep it pretty clean, yeah. Okay. Except for mail that... 
adds up. Well, what I do is I, I designate a drop zone. Or the a drop zone, zone of all the clutter? Well, for, yeah, I think that everybody deserves a clutter zone. Okay. It's, so I think you of it just as like, drop it. Yeah, it's an energetic compost bin in okay. the house. And then once a week you go through it. Or whatever, maybe a month. Yeah. However and long then, it takes to get full. Yeah, just... just yeah. And that way I, I don't feel anal about, like, I have to keep everything in my house in order. That's super. I get this little area that I get to, like, dump stuff dump that I don't want to deal yeah. with. <laughs> and then it's either Goodwill or trash right. or recycling. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, and because it worked for you, you decided to make a profession out of well, it. Well, it was a long path. It worked for me. I started doing it for friends. I wrote my book and went on you wrote a, a book? Yeah, it's called Feng Shui Life Mapping and it's a, a book on how to combine Feng Shui and vision boarding to change your life basically oh. and to organize your house. Um, after that I went on a book tour, I did a lot of workshops and um, so it sort of evolved. It wasn't like I went right into doing it. I've also studied with spiritual teachers, um, a master Taoist and a Native American shaman and it was through all of those different um, that they feng shui. what you did. It, it all started to influence my practice. Okay. And so I. Um, I've Are been, you well known now? Not yet. I don't know what is well it's known. It's word of mouth. Yeah, uh, I go by word of mouth. Um, I get a lot of uh, Refer referrals from uh, Yelp and, and from other people. You're on Yelp. Yeah, I'm on Yelp. And when people say good stuff about you? People, yeah, I have like 30 really good reviews on oh, there. Really? Yeah, which is nice. Oh. So. Usually it's Chinese people who are specialized in this, right? Good point. And there are, um, there are two different schools of feng shui. Mm -hmm. There is Eastern, sometimes called Chinese, mm -hmm. and there is Western. Is it different? It, yes, it is different because the, chi the Eastern feng shui includes all the Chinese mysticism. Okay. Numerology and four pillars and eight mansions and flying stars and things that in America or in the West we would think of as astrology. Mm -hmm. The West does not have the mysticism, but has all the same principles. But you don't look at the way. astrology, do you? I don't. For my, okay. my, I for do your practice. Western. Because I feel it's easier for me to, with Western clients, to explain the principles of feng shui without also having to teach the mysticism around um, Eastern. Do you tell your clients, don't wear that color? You know, I, um, people ask me about color and clothes a lot. And, yeah. you know, color is going to impact your energy and your vitality. But I don't know that there's a definite yes or no for any one person. Should because you throw away a specific color if it doesn't match your style? Um, you know, I, I honor, again, colorists and stylists who go in and do that kind of work. I think it's great. Um, for me as a feng shui consultant, I'm looking at the five elements. Which what are, are? Wood, which feeds fire, creates earth, forms metal, holds water goes around and feeds wood so the five elements and this is green red brown silver or white and uh, uh, what did I say green black or dark blue mm. so those are the five elements and the five colors so if I am wearing red it's because I'm a TV show host and I need to be expressive and I have a lot of energy oh. if I'm wearing blue it's because I am a guest yeah. and I need to be calm and I need to be centered and I, I, I rarely see women wear uh, marine blue I mean dark mm. blue I see them wear like bright blue oh, but yeah. I rarely see a woman with uh, that kind of blue well, is it more of a man color? You know, I, I can't answer masculine, feminine question necessarily. Um, I personally like this. And yeah, because more men wear blue. Did you notice that? I, did, I haven't really noticed that. I'll take a look around. No, no, because maybe their mother uh, gave a lot of blue colors to the boy and gave a lot of pink colors to the girl. So through, as they grow up, they, they love those colors more. Maybe. I mean, I, I see a lot, man, a lot of men with the blue suit and the black suit, mm -hmm. and I see a lot of women with the red jacket. You know, I would agree. There is a, there is seems to be some sort of men are meant to be in the more neutral, muted tones, and yeah. women get to be creative and colorful and fantastic. Okay. But here in San Francisco, I think it's anything goes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In San Francisco, <laughs> it could go wild. Yeah. But. Uh, so Generally, men like a, a more like you say, more like what you're wearing now. You agree with that? I, I can't agree or disagree. I don't think it's my exact experience, okay. but I can see that. But you've blue is your seen. color. I like to wear blue when I'm on TV, or yeah. I like to wear marine. Uh, I'm sorry, maroon, red. Yeah. Like a nice plum purple. 
-hmm. when you're at work? When I'm on TV. When mm -hmm. I'm uh, out in the day to day, I can wear anything. I, I mean, it, it kind of depends on what How I'm How you in the feel mood that for. day? Yeah. Mm. And what energy of the five elements I want to take on. Oh. Like, if I'm feeling like I really want to go inside, be introspective, do meditation, I wear black mm. so that I can be all within. If I feel like I really need to be um, structured and organized, I wear white mm. because white is the energy of organization and order. So I'm able to sit down and focus a little bit more when I'm wearing white. Okay. If, I'm, if I'm out giving a presentation to a large crowd, I wear some element of red, whether it's my shirt or my tie or something. Hmm. Or a wild hat, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but I'll use that as a form of expression, a, a form of me um, moving energy outward and that fire energy. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of pick whatever color is suitable to So the to color the you wear for the day is how you feel for that day? How I want to feel that day. How you want to feel? I mean, if I got dressed right at the minute and I based my whole day on that one feeling, mm. it might not be, it'll change over the day. But if I wake up and I say, well, today I really want to feel productive, I'm going to wear green. Really? Because I want to be productive. I want that energy oh, of the wood green and is activity. Money? Well, green, you can think of it as Green that, is fresh? Green is wood. Oh, it's wood. No, because I, I was told that uh, Starbucks have a green sign because it it's represents freshness. Okay. I've not heard that. Um, I mean, the marketing people designed it that way to represent fresh coffee. Okay. And also, to, it's a color Does of freshness. Does that work for you? Do you think fresh? Well, I do wear occasionally a green pair of pants. But, but when you see the Starbucks sign, do you think fresh coffee? Uh, I, I, they say that subconsciously people think fresh, but I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's true either. That's fascinating. But they decided to I keep love it that green. Kind of stuff. They decided to keep it green. But they worked. Apparently, people are attracted to that green. Something about Starbucks is definitely working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are the, everywhere. I was surprised the, to see him in France. I was like, Oh yeah, I was surprised too. I, I went to like, Châtelet, no, you yes. know. I went to Châtelet was there. I went to I was in Marseille a couple weeks ago and it was there too? You know, right in front of that giant Ferris wheel You're thing. You're kidding me. It's right there and I was like I couldn't believe it. Why Marseille is, is pretty conservative. <laughs> I, I was like, This is so like the coffee They're, is so much better. You know here. what happened? Uh, <laughs> they bought out I mean all those big chain they bought 150,000 uh, little coffee shops. Right. And little by little, they're converting them. You know, pe people are retiring mm -hmm. and they want to sell their right. little uh, right. traditional French coffee Let shop. Go. And they see someone who gives them a big sum of money, they go for it. Yeah, that makes sense. And they go retire. Yeah. But those, each of these shops have their own little style. Yeah. And it's really sad that it's being replaced by something so standard. Do you standard. agree? Standard. You know, I don't know that it's sad. There's also something comforting, you know? Yeah. Like there's that, something uh, about rec knowing. You recognize it. I recognize it, especially if I'm already, I'm in a foreign place and I don't know. Like if I go to a different city, let's say yeah. I'm in New York City and I see Starbucks, it's like, oh, at least I know I'm I can home. go in there I'm and home. I can get my coffee the way I like it. And it's going to, you know, I know how it works. It's it's family a little bit yeah it's some sort of like familiarity the i like familiarity. that it's family there's like my my brother Starbucks but when it brother. didn't exist in france it was all little shops that had yeah. their own little style their yeah. own little painting their own little seats yeah all everything very special yeah and you go in and it's like you actually meet the owner and you get to talk to him you and develop his personality a relationship. yes, yes. So anyway, so you go meet the client, you don't dress a certain way, it depends on the day, and you give them how long of a consultation, one hour? So it's a great question. Um, people get a consultation at any transition period of their life. So if you just bought the home, you just got married, you just moved in together, you just had a baby, you just lost a job, whatever a transition period, that's when you would call me in. And you Because say, let's change things. Let's shift up the energy to match this new transition in your life. Oh, I see. So they could consult you four times a year, four times in their life. Oh, yeah, in their life. Um, yeah, right. It's really random. And sometimes it's just a small, like, hey, this is what's going on. They'll call me up. Hey, this is what's going on. I'll be like, okay, make a few changes like this. Make sure your energy is grounded and go. Um, so in consultation, the first time I come to someone's house, it's usually about two hours. If the space is less... Two hours, that's a long time. You'd be surprised. It's usually around two hours. If it's less than 2,000 square feet. Oh my God. More than 2,000 square feet. Because there's a lot to say about the space? There's a lot to look at. 
and there's a lot of because when I uh, when I make a recommendation, I don't yeah. just say, "Oh, you need to move this there." I actually give a list of recommendations. So, like, here's your options for this feng shui challenge.、Mm. You could hang a picture. You could hang a mirror. You could put a light. You could hang, you know. And once when I'm working with the client, we figure out what's going to work for that space,、mm. get that right item in there, and then go to the next one. So. There's a bit of nuance to it. The bigger the space, the more little areas we need to look at and okay, be concerned. Okay, so、with. let's look at the three major area of life. So there is、uh, money, relationships, and health. So let's say someone wants to improve their health. What do they have to do? Clean.、Uh, first thing is clean out your fridge. Clean out the fridge of all the clutter. Get rid of anything that's expired or that you're not going to eat. That's the first thing. Yeah, wipe down the. Pretend that you are magically going into your entire digestive system and, and cleaning it. Oh, that's the first step. Yeah, just like think about like wiping down all of the drawers and cleaning everything in there,、mm -hmm. and just imagine like you've energetically given your entire digestive system a little cleanse. All right, and then you'll feel better. You'll start to feel better. Okay. Plus, you also start to pay more attention to what you're eating. You'll start to notice, like I'm holding on to these foods I don't use, or this is expired, and let's get rid of it. Get rid of this stuff I don't need, and let's yeah, put like healthy have, foods in there. Yeah, like I have in my、here. fridge a whole bunch of you know condiments. Mm-hmm. I never use them. Right. Get rid of them. Use them once a year at a barbecue that you got stays, invited to, and, and then it stays, stays there. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, it expired last year. Oh my god. You know what I mean? So, so you do get have to get rid of, of it, huh? Okay, I'll do that then when I get home today. Good. All right. <laughs> So the second thing,、uh, everybody wants more money. There is、They、never、do. enough money, even、That's、if、true. you're a millionaire, right? Well, okay, I hate to counter with you, but、um, but people want、uh, always think there's not enough. There's、uh, there's a never there's never an end to desire. Ah. There's never an end to expansion.、We、If there was,、more. we wouldn't be alive. Oh, okay. If I continue、okay. to live, there's a reason because there's something more for me to get out of life. Okay, so、But、we yes, want、I、more. But yes, I hear what you point. We want more. We want to continue expanding. We、ah. want to continue experiencing、right. life. So if you if you make、uh, six figures, you want seven. If you make seven, you want. If、more. you make six figures, you want more chocolate. If you make,、uh, you know, you get、Eight、all the chocolate、figures. you want. You 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 want to get a new car. If you get the car, you want the but you know.、And Then from millionaire you want to become a millionaire. Why not? Why not? Why so not? you want to expand all the time. Um, I personally don't. <laughs> oh, you stay at the same level. I like to expand, but I don't. I'm not in search of money. You're not in search of making more income every year. I mean, ex making income by modest increments. Yes. Modest. Okay. Yeah. Okay.、Yeah. I think I mean if because I because the cost of living goes up anyway, right? <laughs> right. I I wish to I wish to keep my life in balance. Let me put it that way.、Okay. I like to have my life in balance, and I、okay. don't want to be that lottery winner that whose、Spends、life spends it all in、drops. one day. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to gradually increase so that it's an or an organic thing in my life. Okay.、Uh, do you think as you have more money, you're happier?、Uh, me personally, or generally for most people? Generally, do you think I don't believe money、happy? creates happiness at all? All right. Right. I'm sorry. You okay, money no, can't buy happiness、you. or love. It it seems to buy the illusion of ease and、um, effortless life. But with more, the more I receive, the more I have to give, the more I have to be responsible for.、Ah. And a lot of people want to just receive and aren't aware of then the responsibilities of having received that. Okay. So I don't think necessarily having more is going to make anybody happy. All right, so let's、uh, go quickly about the third part, which、oh. is a very difficult part, and that's relationship. That well, is the most difficult part to fix.、Hmm. Don't you think? Well, I feel like that's、um, because you cannot fix a relationship by moving things around in your house. I, I think that it, it requires a change in mindset. If I could offer one to you, okay, go not ahead. Not to think of it as difficult. All right. If, let's see. Let's change the story around making a relationship. Work is hard. To making a relationship work is easy. Is easy. All right, that's a good way to look at it. And and let's change the idea that fixing a relationship is hard. Okay. And say that you know letting a relationship grow naturally is easy. Ah,、uh, okay. So that would be my shift there.、If、But you cannot move things around, and then all of a sudden your relationship is yes, fixed. Yes, you can. Not you fixed. Can. Again, I'm not trying to fix a relationship. But what I will do is change the story. Around. around relationship. Okay, so you see a couple on the verge of divorce. What do you do?
I would ask, like, where's the tension? Okay. Is it around money? Is it around the time that you spend together? Is it around what is it? And then I would go to a space in the house that represents that thing. Ah. And I would say, what can we do here to give you a feeling of ease and freedom right. around that topic? Okay. If it's around, I don't have enough time for him. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What do you do? I would go into the living room and I'd say, "Well, where do you have space for each other to drop in, have a conversation, get cozy?" Oh, there must be a space. There must be, and you know, oftentimes when there are arguments around, there's you never make time for me. Oh. The living room is unused because it's too difficult to navigate and and sit and quietly have a cup of tea together. And oh, it's too things. cluttered. Right, clutter or disorganization or anything like that. Oh, what about if I? Was Three kids running around. You cannot be How alone. How fun! Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't have time alone, right? Because they are around. The um, you know, I I I really want to honor parents because keeping a li keeping a relationship going and raising kids that yeah. is like two full time jobs right there. So what are you going to so do? So honoring them for doing that. So you never it's, have time for yourselves. Well, again, it's changing the story. Oh. Like not saying you never have time. Oh, what do you do? You you would say, hey, how can we find time? Oh. Where do we have time? Changing let's make a list of the last year and when we had time and had fun memories. And let's focus on those times and keep our mind on the story of Christmas, we do have time. Christmas, we had time. Right, right. <laughs> Because so we had a few days off. Okay. Right. And so this is what we want. So let's focus on the good things that we did want. And let's keep our mind on that. As life rolls along and I keep focused on that, soon life will start breaking up and that story of we never have time together starts to be like, hey, we have this. We do have time. We have this time together. We have that time together. And you, and we begin to have a new story going. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, so you change your story. Change the story. Use your environment to help remind you of the new story. Oh. Okay. And you start on a different path. That's true. Some people stick with the story right. and they cannot get rid of it. They don't. Well, yeah, they can't get rid of it because it's being reminded it to them every time they walk into the house. All right. There's a reminder of like, oh, you know, I can't find a new love because I can't ever find a boyfriend as good as my last one. Well, oh. problem is when I go into your place, I see this couch that your boyfriend bought you. Every time you go so into your couch, you're being reminded of your ex-boyfriend. So if you want to find, yeah, if you um, want to find new love, you mm. need to get rid of the things that are reminding you of the old love uh, from your space. Got it. Otherwise, we stay in the story of our old relationship. Good. People don't like hearing this because yes, you do need to give away the gifts, the diamond necklace, the gorgeous shoes, the beautiful dress, all those things that were a gift from your ex. Mm. Get them out of your house for 30 days. It's called a 30-day challenge. Oh. Put anything that has the energy of your ex in a box and send it off to your parents or somebody else's house for 30 days. Oh. Having those reminders, those mementos, that energetic oh, foot reminds fingerprint. Reminds you of the previous relationship. Right. And when it's gone for 30 days, it's enough time to create a break and have you start into a new path around relationships. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we, we touch on all three. So... That's basically what you do. You touch an, a few areas of the person's life. Typically, we do focus on three different areas. Uh, when I come to a person's house to do a con or office to do a consultation, I ask, what are the life goals for the next year? Mm -hmm. And what are three areas? Finances, health, relationship. And what do you want to get out of that? And then we walk around the space and make sure that it is reflecting What, what the, the new the story oh, the that new they story want to you have. have to create for yourself right they make sure it's reflecting the story that they want to create in their life okay and then they keep getting reminded of it every day and next thing you know it's fixed it's happening it's happening yeah you go from having a very volatile relationship with your boss to hey we're getting along now and all it took was a little mirror on the side of my computer okay Crazy. so so after after you say 13 years 16 yeah 16 yeah okay after 16 years every year you improve on one of those areas for yourself or somebody else do it for you Oh, so what I do for myself is I do an annual feng shui life map. I do a vision board, and okay. it has all nine life areas 
mm. on the board. And I focus, what do I want to accomplish this year on those areas? Okay. Sort of my New Year's resolutions, but more of a visual representation of where my life is going to go okay. in 2016 or 2017. Oh, so you do a map for the year? Yeah, well, I do a map for the year. Okay. I recommend doing a map whenever you're, a person is going through a transition. Ah. If they're looking for a job, do a map. What do you want out of that job? How do you want it to look? How much money? What kind of clientele? What kind of so nice. you know? M make a map that visually represents what you want out and of life. And they will appear a few months later. Yeah, I have I have dozens of miraculous stories to that regard. Yes. Okay, so you have to map it first. The, well, you have to map it either on there or in your head. I'll try it. I'll try it. Great. Because I never tried that. Okay. For, for a job okay all right so it's fascinating Thank i have you. to admit it's fascinating because when you see a result then you say mm, must be something to it right right and then you say okay i'm encouraged to keep going in that direction right and then i'm gonna keep on improving in that direction and it worked for you right okay and so because it worked better. for you you advise it to other people yes Okay, I've so seen that's it work for so many people at this point that it it's just—it's just a joy to share it with people. Oh, I'm glad you found uh, something you like to do. Yes, I yeah. feel lucky. Yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, anyway, you described it different than, like you say, like the Chinese describe it. Right. Because the Chinese say, oh, you have to put uh, like the lucky elephant in your house to attract money, or you have to put. Um, something that brings in money, like a green plant. <laughs> or uh, the frog. You can or the do frog. The, the food frog. dog at the yeah, front. Yeah, and the coin, or, whatever. Right. So yours is a different thing. It's the I Western can, one. The Western, right. I can still use those elements and items, but yeah. I tend to use elements and items that the Westerners are more familiar o with. Okay, like yeah. what represents wealth and abundance to a wealth for, wealth and For us, we'll put the dollar bill in our fridge. You could do that. That's uh, yeah. a great idea. I mean, yeah. maybe it's a crystal ball, or maybe it's a big crystal that hang, that's on your... Um, table that energetically is bringing energy into your house okay and yet it's something that most Californians or a lot of Californians think of as being like abundant and rich this beautiful crystal kind of thing or maybe it's um, some beautiful a symbol vase. of wealth yeah a right. symbol of wealth uh, shahuli blown glass oh wow you know like yeah. something that that says to you rich abundance hey, I'm rich yeah right. I was able to afford that that's, piece that's what brings in energy it's the same thing like if the elephant and the food dog and the frog those are all elements those are items that in that culture represent wealth what represent bringing energy into your life so in the west we use what represents wealth to you hmm. what brings energy into your life For, in my judgment having a frog and having a rabbit's foot is about the same mm -hmm. I believe in rabbit foots. They will bring you good luck, right? Ah, okay. You know that whole story? That whole story? It's like, if I believe in the frog, the frog is going to bring me good luck. So you, it depends what your internal belief. Right. If okay. I believe in something, it makes it real. Okay. To some regard. Yeah, okay. So you d perfectly described what you do. And I, I, I'm going to try a couple things when Wonderful. I go home or maybe this week. And I'll send you a little text to let you know that please I did do, it. Please do. All right. Do. <laughs> All right. I'll try a couple of these things. So thank you so much for thank this you. consultation. Yeah, because, it was fun. Because I got some ideas from you. So it was uh, Salvatore Manzi who has some great ideas on how to improve your life. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank it was you. a pleasure. It Thank was. you.